This is Made for More Living with Johnny Jennings, powered by EXP Realty, online at madeformoreliving.com. So we're talking with Tom Daves about foreclosures. Are they coming back? If so, how are we going to be prepared? But before we get into that, Tom, about how many uh, foreclosures, REOs, would you say you and your team sold back in the day? Well, we were selling over 500 REOs per year consistently for five years. So it was over 2,500 homes. It was like drinking out of a fire hose. It was crazy. So in, out of those 2,500 homes, did you have any crazy stories, like somebody pulling a gun on you or anything like that? Well, unfortunately, I did have, I do have a crazy story where, um, you know, back then when you, went through a for, when you went through a foreclosure, of course, you would have to, uh, you know, when the bank would take it back, they would have to evict the tenant. So back then you could evict an, a tenant in 30, uh, evict the owner in 30 days. So um, we went through the eviction process and then... I would go out there every single week, knock on the door. This guy wouldn't answer, wouldn't answer. And then um, once we completed the court process with the uh, eviction, um, I went over there. I had my locksmith and had the sheriff and knock on the door. He didn't answer. And so the sheriff said, okay, pick the lock. So the locksmith picked the lock and then the owner opened the door quickly and he was standing there with a 357 Whoa. and there was the locksmith there was me and then there was the sheriff and i quickly <laughs> retreated around the corner and the sheriff stood there with the gun and he slammed the door closed and um but it took probably about 12 hours to get him out they brought in the swat team the police the fire department there were helicopters i mean it was crazy, but he they finally got him out, and we were able to get the property, get it secured, get it fixed up, and get it sold to a new buyer with full disclosure. So it was definitely... <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Have there been smoke bombs in the house? Yes. <laughs> yes, there has. Wow, that's crazy. So with... Um, so that's... Uh, did you ever have any other guns pulled on you? Because I've, I've had some situations, but I haven't sold nearly as many homes as you have. No, that's the only gun I've ever had pulled on me. How about you? Oh, gosh. So, there, yeah, so there was one time where um, it was a miscommunication. I don't know. I can't remember now. A if miscommunication. I was, yeah, well, that's you know, what it all comes you know, down to, it's, right? It's a simple There was just a miscommunication. Yeah, so the wife didn't tell the, the owner or the, her husband that I was coming by. And um, so I knock on the door. And this this guy, he answers, like, can I help you? I was like, yeah, hey, my name is Johnny. I'm here to, you know, to meet with you about uh, going over options to sell your home. And he's like, he's got his hand the whole time behind his back, like in his, like, looks, looks like he's in his, in his pocket. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, your wife told me to, Mary told me to come by. And he's like, mm hmm. And so he's like, just stand right there. And he slowly backed up and he like kept 15 feet. And then once we warmed up, he, uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, you're cool. And then he, but he had a freaking like nine, nine millimeter in his back pocket, like, and it's, crazy. Hip, it's a hip holster. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. People, you know, they will do crazy things. And especially with something involving your home. I mean, your home is sacred. It's emotional. Um, and, you know, back then when you would lose your home, actually, another story had an owner. Um, I just took this property. We just listed it and uh, got the owner out of it. Went back and he torched the house. He burned that wow. house down. Yeah. Wow. I went to the sales meeting that Friday and told everybody about my new listing, and unfortunately, <laughs> it uh, caught on. Fire. They, it got burned down, and uh, one of the wisecracks in the office said, "Oh, that was the hottest listing in town." <laughs> hottest listing in town. You got sure? You saw that one coming. Vacant listing, vacant lot. Yeah. So let's talk about foreclosures because you've gone through this in the '90s. You saw it in the 2000s. What do you foresee with, with these high interest rates? Well, one thing I was going to mention is there's always an opportunity. No matter what the market is doing, there's always an opportunity for owners, buyers, sellers, and for real estate agents. And I'll never forget when the market started to correct in 2012, I got a contact from Blackstone Private Equity, and they called me, and it's the biggest private equity in the world, and they wanted to start buying properties. They wanted to, but at the time, unfortunately, they didn't really fully disclose or say that they were Blackstone. 
And when you're handling a lot of foreclosure properties, you get investor calls all day long. Hey, I want to buy properties. Hey, I want to buy, you know, can yeah. you find me a deal? Can you find me a deal? And so I got this call and they said, yeah, um, we're looking to buy a lot of investment properties, a lot of uh, REO foreclosure properties. Uh, can we meet with you? And I said, no, I'm good. Thanks. And that guy said, you know what? We're Blackstone Private Equity. We're going to be at the Hyatt tomorrow. And if you want to meet with us, we're going to be there at one o'clock. I was like, oh, okay. So I met with them. And the next week, they actually flew me to New York to meet with the senior management at Blackstone Private Equity. I mean, I met with the CEO, CFO, Jonathan Gray, all of that. Wow. And then t back to opportunity, they realized that there was a huge opportunity, and especially in the Sacramento market, and they started buying a lot of properties. They bought them, and then they held them, and in fact, they still have them. So... Um, lots of opportunity, whether it's an up market or a down market. Um, back to your question, um, I don't believe that there will be very many REO foreclosure properties. Um, there will be a few. There's always people that aren't making their payments, and there's always banks that are taking them back. But yeah. if you think about it right now, I mean, we have had such a huge upside uh, appreciation over the last six, eight, ten years. Everyone, literally everyone, has equity now. So they're not willing to let go of their home if they have equity. So there's not that many foreclosures, and I don't really see that many coming down the pipeline. But there will be opportunity. There will be opportunity, yeah. So something I'm actually starting to hear more and more from lenders is they're starting to do a lot of cash-out refis. Because people are, with inflation and just the current state of the economy right now, they're trying to maintain a lifestyle that maybe they, they can't support otherwise. And so they are tapping into um, like pulling out, pulling out cash so that way they can pay down their credit card bills. Um, I was at one appointment in Rockland, and it was this, it was this couple. And they're, uh, one, I think one's from the U.S., one's from not, not from the U.S., and they moved here. And they both have tons of student student debt, over six hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, and they were saying that hey, based off their income, because now uh, the student loans are going to have to start being repaid back, that their income is going to like they're going to have to make eight thousand dollar a month payments on that on that student loan debt, and so now they're selling their home and trying trying to figure stuff out. So you're right, there is always opportunities, um, but yeah, man, if you are if you are in a if you're looking to have some financial advice, reach out to us. We got some great financial advisors that can help you. You don't need to, you know, risk your future, your children's future, or your security based off of, um, you know, fear. And there's a lot of options for buyers out there right now. A lot of lenders have additional programs to really help buyers. Yes, interest rates are higher, but there's a lot of options. Lenders have. Uh, available funding and financing to really help buyers get into a home because it's still the American dream. And I'll also say the underwriting guidelines have loosened up significantly. So don't be afraid and don't miss out on buying a home and taking advantage of the appreciation because you can always possibly, you can always refinance later. Johnny, do you have any other thoughts on that? No, you're 100% right. So there are a lot of programs and opportunities out there because, I mean, the government's, the state of California specifically, is encouraging home ownership because they understand how hard it is. But, um, yeah, it's, there's, there's always an opportunity. If you're looking to sell, now's a good time. Interest rates are high, but there's a lot of buyers out there that are looking to purchase. If you're looking to buy a home, sellers are flexible. They're willing to give you some credits. They're willing to help you buy down the rate in order to make that happen. What about real estate agents? Maybe they're listening and they're thinking about getting their license, right? Uh, or maybe they're a current agent and they're trying to take their career to the next level. Maybe they're dissatisfied with what's going on. Yeah. What's your thoughts and your invites and your encouragement to those currently in 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 the, in the industry or those thinking about it? Well, um, you're right, Matt. We are getting a lot of calls from people that do want to get into the real estate industry. They want uh, to change careers. So there's 
actually a great opportunity for people just getting into the real estate market right now because let's face it, there are changes in the industry and sometimes the old guard has so many old rules and old ways of doing business, they're not willing to change. So there's great opportunity for uh, new agents that want to get it to get involved with the real estate business. And uh, we have all of the teaching and the coaching and the training and the mentorship to really help someone be successful. Yeah, because like you said earlier in the show, um, they can lean on all of your experience and wealth of information. They don't have to necessarily go through all of those mistakes and all of those experiences to benefit from what you've already gone through. Absolutely. And a lot of times it's just, you know... And for example, with our company, EXP Realty, we actually have 80 hours of live training each week. The good news is we have 80 hours of live training each week. But also, <laughs> the bad news is we have 80, 80 hours, hours of live training. And a lot of the agents, they want to spend all their time in training. Yep. And so what we do is we encapsulate all of the training that they need to do in a quick one-week boot camp so they can immediately start working with buyers, start working with sellers, and start, you know, closing some deals and uh, uh, earning some money earning and some having money. some fun. <laughs> yep, having fun. Yeah, actually, that's what we're going to talk about when we come back is the difference between agents who succeed in the industry and agents who are not succeeding in the industry right now. And some tips and tricks on how to be the latter. Back in a second. Okay, Matt, so we all know that I am a planner. I love plans just like I love spreadsheets. They are, they're just amazing. Right. <laughs> uh, but I've also learned- You have a master's degree in Excel, right? Oh my right? gosh, yes, I do love it. But this is the thing that I've also had to learn is like I can make the best plan in the world, but rarely do things go according to plan. That's right. Unless, of course, you use our friend Johnny Jennings to help sell your home, which is what Dave and Melissa did because they were retiring, moving out of state, and they needed the most that they could get from their home because that was part of their retirement plan. And Johnny Jennings was able to sell their home for $40,000 over list price wow. in less than a week. Hey, that's what happens when you work with our good friend Johnny Jennings and the Tom Dave's real estate team. If you're curious what your home would sell for, go to TomDaves.com, type in your address right away. You find Find out what kind of offers you would get and listen to this, how much you would get if you wanted a cash offer, no matter what kind of condition your home is in. The website again is Tom, D-A-V-E-S.com or give Johnny Jennings a call anytime at 855-TOM-DAVES. License number 581-837.